Well, howdy there, friends. Today we're embarking on a remarkable journey to catch a glimpse of how the cast members from The A-Team have changed over the years. We'll be revealing their true identities and ages, and you're in for a real treat as we compare their youthful days on the show to the present year of 2024. So, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Y'all ready for this ride? Let's get this journey rolling. 1. Mr. T as B.A. Baracus We feel sorry for the individual who dares to confront Bosco Albert B.A. Baracus. B.A. not only signifies bad attitude, but it also apparently stands for badass. Given that the performer who portrayed the rugged A-team sergeant has led a captivating life over the past three decades. In the midst of and following the production of The A-Team, Mr. T delved into voice acting, made appearances on other immensely popular shows like Different Strokes, and even ventured into professional wrestling, a decision that proved successful as his combat career endured until 2001. Regrettably, in 1995, Mr. T received a diagnosis of T-cell lymphoma. However, this has not hindered his acting pursuits. In the years following the A-Team, Mr. T has specialized in portraying himself, a circumstance primarily attributed to his commanding personality and marketable presence. Presently, the individual once recognized for his rugged demeanor can be spotted in advertisements for World of Warcraft, Comcast, and, as depicted above, Snickers. Despite Mr. T mentioning that he no longer adorns himself with his iconic stacked gold chains, he has retained the B.A. Baracus mohawk and thick beard, a lasting tribute to his time with one of the world's premier teams. 2. Dirk Benedict as Templeton Faceman Peck, Experienced Performer Dirk Benedict assumed the suave, smooth-talking character of Lieutenant Templeton Faceman Peck in 1983. Cherished for his slightly cunning demeanor, finely honed abilities in extricating himself from precarious situations, often without explanation or so much as a blemish on his well-groomed visage, and knack for persuading anyone to grant him what he desires, Benedict's portrayal of Faceman paved the way for additional achievements following the show's termination. In that same year, he opted for the theatrical path, taking on an adaptation of Shakespeare's Hamlet, before returning to the silver screen for projects such as Shadow Force and Alaska. Benedict even marked his directorial and screenwriting debut in 2001 with the dramatic film Cahoots. After navigating through sporadic TV appearances, a foreign cinematic endeavor, two literary works, revelations of a skydiving daredevil, and then we embarked on a fishing expedition, and several television movies, Benedict found himself participating in the 2007 edition of the British reality show Celebrity Big Brother. Over the past decade, Benedict has maintained a relatively low profile, though he did make a brief appearance in the A-Team film in 2010. Unfortunately, Benedict wasn't entirely pleased with the movie as his role lasted only a few seconds. Naturally, it's likely to assume that the majority of individuals were dissatisfied with the film. 3. Lance Legault as Cole Decker While Lance Legault achieved notable fame prior to the A-Team, his portrayal of Roderick Decker earned him acclaim from audiences worldwide. Following his tenure as the show's gun-wielding colonel, Legault wasn't ready to retire his stone face and gravelly voice. It's entirely logical, then, that he would make an appearance as yet another colonel in Magnum P.I. Subsequently, Legault featured in diverse television series during the late 80s and 90s, most notably in Dallas, Battlestar Galactica, MacGyver, and Crusade. In his later years, Legault revisited his 60s and 70s origins as he transitioned back to the film industry. He played a role in 1997's Mortal Kombat, Annihilation, and lent his voice to a character in the animated Disney film Home on the Range. Unfortunately, Legault passed away in 2012. However, he posthumously appeared, alongside Paul Rudd and Emil Hirsch, in the 2013 comedy-drama film Prince Avalanche, a movie dedicated to the actor's memory. 4. 
Eddie Velez as Frankie Santana. Indeed, special effects maestro Frankie Santana found himself coerced into joining the A-Team. But that didn't dampen actor Eddie Velez's enthusiasm for his role in the series. Quite the contrary, the actor stood out prominently among the other A-Team stars. Thankfully, when NBC pulled the plug on the show, Velez secured several roles that ensured both steady paychecks and a continuous presence in the spotlight. The actor took on the character of Frankie Avila in 12 episodes of True Blue, transitioned to Live Shot in 1995 to embody Ricardo Sandoval, and then immersed himself in the most melodramatic of daytime soap operas, Days of Our Lives. Assuming the role of Paul Mendez, Velez made 20 appearances on the show between 2001 and 2003, a commendable stint. His subsequent guest spots encompassed Pacific Blue, Charmed, and Numb Thurs. Velez also boasts feature film credits in Romero, Traffic, Repo Chick, and Bullet Face. However, the majority of individuals will likely associate the actor with his performance in the uproarious Wyans Brothers film, White Chicks. 5. Marla Heasley as Tanya Baker in the latter part of the second season, Allen was substituted by fellow journalist Tanya Baker, Marla Heasley. Before her time on the A-Team, Heasley participated in the initial four episodes of Star Search in the Spokes Model category. Heasley has made cameo appearances on numerous other television programs, such as T.J. Hooker, The Love Boat, Riptide, Mike Hammer, The Highwayman, and numerous others. She portrayed an unnamed Air Force lieutenant in the Galactica 1980 episode titled Spaceball. Heasley was raised in Beverly Hills and attended Beverly Hills Catholic School until the age of 12, at which point her parents relocated the family to Palm Springs. Her father, Jack Heasley, and Uncle Bob Heasley were identical twins and professional ice skaters, known as the Heasley Twins. They skated alongside Sonia Heaney and Dorothy Lewis and performed in their own ice reviews. Their film credits include Dr. Seuss's The 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T, 1953, Ice Capades, 1941, Thin Ice, 1937, A Chump at Oxford, 1940, and many more. Eventually, they became successful entertainment managers, overseeing the careers of Audie Murphy, Shelley Winters, and others. Despite being raised in the entertainment industry, Heasley never aspired to pursue acting. Her initial inclination was towards fashion merchandising, but she engaged in modeling while attending Orange Coast College in Costa Mesa. Heasley had a romantic relationship and cohabited with Wayne Newton from 1983 to 1991, with an engagement lasting from 1987 to 1991. In 2001, Heasley married international business entrepreneur Christopher Harriman, following a relationship that began in 1992. 6. George Peppard as John Hannibal Smith As a prominent member of the A-Team's leading actors, George Peppard portrayed Colonel John Hannibal Smith with an affectionate intensity and a substantial cigar consistently nestled between his teeth. Serving as the chief of the rebellious squad, Hannibal frequently embraced various personas and aliases, occasionally adopting disguises, yet always maintaining his distinctive black leather gloves and smirking grin. Following the conclusion of the A-Team in 1987, Peppard continued his acting career, making appearances in the television movies Man Against the Mob and Man Against the Mob, The Chinatown Murders, as Frank Doki. He also graced the stage as Ernest Hemingway in the 1988 play Papa. Peppard assumed the role of another colonel, call Harry Martineau, Max Vogel to be precise, in the made-for-television film Night of the Fox in 1990. Similar to his A-team counterpart, Peppard was a smoker, a habit that led to his diagnosis of lung cancer in 1992. Unfortunately, he succumbed to the illness just two years later, at the age of 65, following complications from pneumonia. Shortly before his passing, Peppard completed filming the pilot episode for a potential Matlock spin-off series, titled The P.I. In the 2010 A-Team remake film, Liam Neeson steps into the late actor's shoes to assume the role of Hannibal.
we believe Peppard would have endorsed the portrayal. 7. Dwight Schultz as Howling Mad Murdoch Dwight Schultz soared into widespread recognition in his portrayal as Captain H.M. Howling Mad Murdoch. Since then, he has featured in a couple of television series, most notably Star Trek The Next Generation and Star Trek Voyager as Lieutenant Reginald Reg Barkley. Schultz also ventured into cinema after the A-Team, securing roles in 1989's Fat Man and Little Boy and 1996's Star Trek First Contact. The individual even made an appearance in a post-credits scene in Joe Carnahan's A-Team film. Starting from the late 90s onward, Schultz discovered his niche in voiceover work for both television and video games. You might even discern a few vocal nuances of Howling Mad in titles such as Fallout 4, Final Fantasy Find, Yakuza, Wolfenstein, The New Order, and the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Concerning his personal life, the man renowned for his on-screen eccentricity settled into domestic life with a spouse and offspring before the conclusion of the A-Team filming. More recently, Schultz served as the host of the now-discontinued conservative podcast Howling Mad Radio, and he routinely makes appearances on political discussion shows, all while providing his audience with conservative insights through his devoted fan platform. 8. Melinda Q. Lea as Amy Amanda Allen Progressing beyond the primary male characters, Melinda Q. Lea took on the role of Amy Amanda Allen, the journalist reporter who never allowed anything to rattle her confidence, at least not initially. Despite the brevity of Kulea's stint as Triple A, with some asserting that the lead men conspired against her, others claiming she sought excessive compensation, and a few suggesting she felt dissatisfied in the role. The actress secured consistent opportunities in the ensuing years. Kulea's professional history includes a lead role as Terry Randolph in Glitter and a recurring role in Knott's Landing as Paul Vertosik. She showcased her acting prowess in renowned programs like St. Elsewhere, The X-Files, and Murder, she wrote, and even shared the screen with fellow A-Team performer Dwight Schultz in an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Unfortunately, her momentum began to wane around the turn of the century. Culia's final appearance was in the 2001 film, Dying on the Edge. While it appears she has relinquished acting entirely, Culia has found success in the literary realm. In 2016, she unveiled her inaugural novel, an illustrated mystery titled Wondago, published by Griffith Moon Publishing. 9. Carl Franklin as Captain Crane. Although fans only had a glimpse of the charismatic army officer Captain Crane in a few episodes, the actor in the role has been active in the film and television industry for much longer than his two-year tenure on the A-Team, while maintaining a presence in the public eye with minor roles in shows such as Roseanne, ALF, and Steel Magnolias, Carl Franklin discovered his genuine passion behind the lens. Following the A-Team, Franklin has steered the direction of projects like Devil in a Blue Dress, High Crimes, and Bless Me, Ultima. He has also showcased his writing skills, notably with the 1990 film Last Stand at Lang May. Among his diverse pursuits, Franklin has garnered the most recognition for his directorial work in television, a venture that has seen significant success in recent years. While Franklin has contributed commendable single-episode work to shows like The Pacific, Homeland, and Bloodline, he has found a comfortable home in a streaming series. Interestingly, he directed four episodes of Netflix's House of Cards. In fact, one of Franklin's episodes, the season two premiere, Chapter 14, earned the director an Emmy nomination, establishing him as one of the most accomplished figures from the A-Team. 10. Robert Vaughn as General Hunt Stockwell. General Hunt Stockwell possessed a talent for provocation, a no-nonsense demeanor, and a flair for rocking aviator-framed blue blockers with unparalleled style. Seasoned actor Robert Vaughn seamlessly embraced the role, 
bringing the formidable antagonist to life in the show's ultimate season. With an already extensive list of acting credits on his curriculum vitae, Vaughn maintained his swift pace once the show concluded. He graced the stage as Juror 9 in 12 Angry Men, made appearances in several episodes of Law & Order, and took on roles in movies such as Motel Blue, Pootie Tang, and The Magnificent Eleven. Vaughn's most significant post The A-Team role, however, came as Albert Stroller in the British drama series Hustle, which aired from 2004 to 2012. On the personal front, Vaughn tied the knot in 1974 and shared parental responsibilities for two children with his spouse until his passing in November 2016. Following a year-long battle with leukemia, Vaughn left us just a few weeks before what would have been his 84th birthday, and with a filmography that includes The Magnificent Seven and Bullet, we have full confidence that Vaughn's acting legacy will endure for a considerable time. 11. Jack Ging as General Harlan Bull Fulbright Jack Ging gained prominence for his role as General Harlan Bull Fulbright in NBC's TV adventure series, The A-Team. Born on November 30, 1931, in Alva, Oklahoma, Ging hailed from a farming family on the outskirts of Alva. His grandparents participated in the Cherokee Strip Land Run of 1893. During his youth, his parents separated, and his mother took on a job as a Harvey girl. In 1960, Ging featured in an episode of The Twilight Zone titled The Whole Truth. He made three guest appearances on Perry Mason, including a role as Danny Pierce in The Case of the Lonely Eloper, in 1962. From 1962 to 1964, he portrayed a young psychiatrist in NBC's 62-episode medical drama, The Eleventh Hour. In 1966, he took on the role of Simon Dobbs, a blind ex-lawman adjusting to his new condition. In the Gunsmoke TV Western episode, Stage Stop, S12E10, Jack and Katie Ging tied the knot right out of high school. Following their divorce, he married Gretchen Groening on April 19, 1956. They had a son, but divorced in September 1973. On September 23, 1978, Ging married Sharon Ramona Thompson in Los Angeles, and they had two daughters. Ging passed away from natural causes at his La Quinta, California residence on September 9, 2022, at the age of 90. 12. Mills Watson as Stryker Mills Watson portrayed Stryker in the A-Team television series. Watson was born in Oakland, California, and was raised on a ranch near Stockton. His father worked as a sheep rancher, and his mother served as a school teacher. His grandparents hailed from Texas. He attended Franklin Elementary School and graduated from Elk Grove High School in 1958. During his childhood, his family did not own a television, and, like many families of that era, they relied on the radio for news and entertainment. Following high school, he attended San Francisco State University for two semesters, briefly studying acting under Victor French. Currently, he resides in Marcola, Oregon, where he dwells on a 15-acre farm with his second wife, Sue. When asked in an interview if he misses acting, he responded, No, I was fortunate to have the opportunity to do as much as I desired. I experienced enough of that. Today, I have a 15-acre farm, cultivating hay. I simply unwind here with Sue. There's no pressure up here in Oregon. It's secure and not stressful at all, which I believe is preserving my well-being. It's clear that the legacy of this iconic series lives on through the continued success and achievements of its remarkable cast. We hope you enjoyed this nostalgic trip down memory lane as much as we did. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on more captivating content. Until next time, this has been the A-Team 1983-1987 Cast Then and Now. Thanks for joining us.